Here in the heart of the Mexican jungle lies one of the most endangered species of primates in the world, the Jeffrey spider monkey. This species has suffered a loss of over 80% in the last 45 years. I'm here to see if I can find this species and meet up with a scientist who records their acoustic vocalizations to see if she can learn more about their behavior and the impact that us humans have on this species. My name is Anja Hutschenreiter. I'm a postdoctoral researcher and I've been studying the spider monkeys here in the Yucatan Peninsula for the last five years. The Quintana Roo region of Mexico draws millions of tourists every single year. As such, scientists are beginning to look at whether the wildlife in this area are able to coexist with humans and the impact that the tourism has on many species. But specifically, I wanted to find out more about the Jeffrey spider monkey. Spider monkeys have long lanky arms and prehensile tails that allow them to move gracefully from branch to branch and tree to tree through the forest. After two nights out trying, we were lucky enough to find a whole troop of spider monkeys, including some tiny babies as well. Typically, a spider monkey female will give birth to just one single baby every two to five years. These babies are dependent on their mother for their first 10 weeks or so of life, and then they start to explore their environment and play amongst themselves. However, they do stay with their moms for the first year or so of their life often clinging to their backs as they move from tree to tree through the canopy. As amazing as they are to look at, this scientist's research is all about how they sound. I'm meeting up with Dr. Anya to learn more about her work. She monitors and studies populations of spider monkeys using acoustic monitoring devices in order to determine to what extent humans and spider monkeys are able to coexist. The use of acoustic recorders has become very popular over the last couple of years for species monitoring, especially here in a, in a dense tropical forest as we have here. It's incredibly useful because most, most often you hear an animal a lot earlier before you actually see it. And so during my PhD research, I started using those passive acoustic monitoring devices, as we call them. So what I do is instead of going out in the forest and spending a lot of time walking there and looking for the monkeys, I hang a recorder in there, leave the recorder there. I come back a month later, the recorder records the soundscape in the environment for the whole month. I come back, I take out the SD card, I go home and then I can check on the recordings if I can hear the sounds of spider monkeys. And then I know they were present. One of the key sounds that Dr. Anya listens out for is the spider monkey whinny. This sound has high variability, meaning that it never sounds the same. So it's not as easy as it may seem. It's called whinny because it sounds a bit like a horse whinny. If you force me to imitate it, I would, <laughs> <laughs> it would go a, bit, a little bit like <laughs> Once you heard it, then you know it's a spider monkey and it's really easy to detect spider monkeys from the sound in the forest. What I found during my PhD research was actually quite interesting because after serving spider monkeys for one and a half years in more than 50 different places, we found that actually there are more spider monkeys in area where there's more human presence and where there's more human impact, more disturbance. And that is a bit of the opposite of what you usually expect. You usually expect um, there are less animals. So animals usually avoid areas of human presence. One of the hypotheses is that uh, humans as well as monkeys are actually attracted to the same areas. They share common interests. So one of those interests are the so-called cenotes, which are natural sinkholes filled with groundwater. And these cenotes are really beautiful places, so people love to go there to swim and to scuba dive. They're very popular tourist attractions. But of course, they also play a very big role in, in their ecosystem. When you think of it, coexistence between humans and other animals is actually not a new concept. The Mayans here in the Yucatan Peninsula have a very long history of living in peace with the monkeys. 
The problem is that the human population is growing and growing. So at some point, people started living in cities and the, the environment just became too hostile for many animal species. And that's why nowadays we think a bit more of uh, cities versus nature, although of course it's actually not um, not the true story. We actually, we've always used to, to coexist with other animals. And nowadays, well, we have the problem that there's less and less space available on the planet because we convert more and more land um, for crop cultivation and for cattle ranching. So we need to find a solution where these animal species are supposed to go because they're losing their habitat. I had the most amazing time seeing the spider monkeys here in the wild for the first time. And it was also incredibly valuable to learn about the impacts that we have as humans and how we can coexist with this species going forwards. I was quite surprised actually to learn that they're seen here most frequently in the areas with the most human disturbance. But it was an exciting and new perspective to see what's possible with the coexistence between humans and monkeys in this area providing hope for the coexistence of species in the rapidly changing world in which we live.